this is a horrible, horrible scene that we are seeing here behind us. Just take a look at how massive this smoke plume is. We got a helicopter right here behind us. I heard you and Steffi Corey talking about the absolute air show. We've seen multiple helicopters going back and forth right over the top of us here in this smoke plume. It just seems to get bigger and bigger. We've been watching this same helicopter since we got here. It continues to dip just south of where we are standing in Medical Lake, and it's heading to the south as soon as it uh, picks up that water. Yeah, Corey, I'm just going to step out of the way because the real story is what's going on behind me. This has been growing and growing for the last five minutes. That helicopter just landed here about five minutes ago, got hooked up to a hose, and it's off on its way. We're several other breaking stories. One person is dead following a shooting and a car crash in Spokane. Police responded to the 200 block of East Cleveland around 7.30 tonight to a crash report. They say a driver hit a parked car and flipped. Witnesses also heard gunshots near the crash. Fire crews came to get the victim out of the car, and when they got him out, they saw that he was suffering from gunshot wounds to the chest. He did die at the hospital. Some more breaking news. Police are investigating a robbery where shots were fired at a gas station tonight. Police told us they responded to a call of a robbery at the Sure Save Grocery on North Monroe Street and West Euclid Avenue. At some point, somebody fired a gun there. Luckily, no one was hurt, but police say the suspect or suspects took off. At this point, they police say that they don't know what, if anything, was taken there. They also told us they do not believe this is connected to the deadly crash investigation on Cleveland. We are following several breaking news stories tonight. I'm Morgan Ashley. First, we start at the Monroe Street Bridge. That is where Adam Schwager just arrived. Adam, what are you hearing? Yeah, Morgan, the bridge is completely cleared now, but let's take you to some footage from what it looked like just a while ago, about 15 minutes ago when I arrived, police told me that SPD and Spokane Fire were called to the scene uh, for a water rescue based on witness reports of someone trying to jump. It's hard to describe the emotion here earlier today as about 100 people watched in silence as those military flags behind me were changed out. After the event, I got to talk to the mother of Noah Bratcher, a Marine who paid the ultimate sacrifice, and I asked her, what does Memorial Day mean to you? Order. Oh. It is just amazing how I can find ways to live on his incredible memory. Christy Stender's younger son Noah lost his life while serving as a Marine in 2018. When she arrived at the Fallen Heroes Military Memorial Monday morning, and saw rows of boots displaying pictures of local fallen service members placed by the Washington State Fallen Heroes Project, she got emotional. I just walked down here and I just lost it and started crying. It was just amazing. And I just, I wished I had arms big enough to hug everything. Christy says she originally told Noah he could join the military as an officer, but after his first year at the Air Force Academy, he came to her and said, How can I lead men into battle if I don't know what it's like being on the ground first? And what could I have said? Noah served in the Marine Corps before dying by suicide. Now, Christy spends days like today honoring his legacy. In the Memorial Day, let's do the best we can do for those we have lost. And if they are our children, Let's embrace them and let them know that we will never forget how much we loved them and how much we appreciated them while they were here with us. One of the things that's really stuck with me from today's ceremony is that we shouldn't honor these soldiers for how they died, but rather for the voluntary oath they took to lay their lives on the line to protect freedom. And for that, we're thankful. In Spokane tonight, Adam Schwager, Nonstop Local. I got into barbering when I was 20, 24 and just fell in love with it. I've been cutting hair since I was a kid, uh, and it's just been something that's kind of been second nature to me. So Starting off with my first location, we were small. We were just a, um, a two-man crew, and then about a year in, people started liking you know, what we were doing uh, in the community and things like that. And so we had just an influx of a lot of barbers come to us, so we had to expand pretty quickly. The barbershop isn't just one thing. 
there's multiple things that we have going on to help this community. One of the best ways that we can give back as, as barbers is using our hands. Man, just to see, you know what I mean, uh, to see a kid's face or, you know what I mean, an adult that's happy with a cut and satisfied, you know, gets compliments by the wife, the mom, you know, or at school, you know. It's good to see people get good cuts, you know. We do have a lot of parents who have adopted African-American children, and I don't shy away from it. I, I tell them, if you have questions, ask. Text me, you know, because um, if you don't know something, the best way to learn it is to, is to ask your barber. And if I don't know the answer, I can help you get to the right, the right person who will. I think that there are more allies than we than there have ever been in the black community. I think that I think that this is one of the industries that that works so closely with the community. So like I have a range of clients that range from felons to lawyers. So I think this is one of the most unique structures of a business that can bring people together from all different kinds of backgrounds. And when they walk through those doors, they forget about everything going on in the world. We're all just here getting haircuts and talking and laughing. You know? <laughs>
But yeah, we save them up for Memorial Day. <laughs> we definitely like to come to the military ones to honor those, especially those who have been forgotten. We like to find the ones that, that nobody's visited and make sure that they're visited. And when we do that, we just don't put the penny on the stone. We like to say their name, thank them, and just so they know that they were remembered. And it's just a good time for us to reconnect with our past, you know, because the family that has passed on has, we're their legacy, and we hope to pass a legacy that's worthy of remembering on to our children and grandchildren. Date of death, 6-2-2021, Durban, Korea. It's really important for me, as well as my, to teach my children and grandchildren that freedom isn't, doesn't come without a price. And so if we can be a part of honoring those who have paid a heavy price for us, even, even, if, it, even if it wasn't their life, but their time and their efforts. Because uh, when, you, when you serve, you really don't know what could or might happen. And, we're just grateful for those who served and all their families, the sacrifices they make to let their loved ones yeah. go and protect us. Freedom is our cause, but freedom does not come free. And many paid the ult ultimate price. They truly deserve to be remembered.